This is Christopher Byers from criticalcaredvm.com. Welcome to Tackling Thyrotoxicosis, part of Endocrine 411, brought to you by Drip Learning Technologies. Please meet Poppy. She's a 13-year-old female spayed domestic short hair who was presented to you for her preventative health care examination. At this point, based on Poppy's history and physical examination, I think it would be very logical to make a tentative diagnosis of hyperthyroidism and secondary hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So how do we prove our clinical suspicion of hyperthyroidism and secondary hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? Well, obviously we need to run some tests. A logical minimum database for a patient like Poppy includes a complete blood count, serum biochemical profile, and a urinalysis. I think it's always good to know the retroviral status of a sick cat. Because we're worried about hyperthyroidism, we should measure a total thyroxine level, and we should measure her blood pressure because many patients with hyperthyroidism and cardiovascular disease have hypertension. Because we're concerned about secondary hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, measuring her feline pro-BNP via SNAP modality would also be very appropriate. So let's look at some results. Her CBC identified a lymphopenia. Her serum biochemical profile identified a mild elevation of ALT at 254 units per liter. Her creatinine was normal. Her alkaline phosphatase was mildly elevated at 176 units per liter. And her phosphorus level was similarly mildly elevated at 5.9 milligrams per deciliter. Her urine-specific gravity was concentrated at 1037, and there was no evidence of proteinuria, and she had an inactive urine sediment. She tested negative for both feline leukemia virus and feline immunodeficiency virus. Her total thyroxine level was at the high end of the normal reference range at 3.9 micrograms per deciliter. Her blood pressure was acceptable for an in-clinic measurement at 148 millimeters of mercury systolic via Doppler, and her feline pro-BNP via SNAP modality was abnormal. So based on these results, you continue to be concerned about secondary hypertrophic cardiomyopathy for Poppy. But interestingly, despite your clinical suspicion, her total thyroxine level was normal. It was at the high end of the normal reference range, but nevertheless, it was normal. So, does that mean we have completely ruled out hyperthyroidism for Poppy at this time? 